Hello tennis guys and welcome to my channel. So it is a time for another donation question. And in this video there will be actually two questions answered from a single donation. And at least one of them is really interesting. So guys, stay tuned for more. 5, 4, 30, 15, just kept replaying that point over and 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 over again. So this question or these two questions come from Dominic and Dominic bought me two coffees. So he deserves, he deserves to um, ask me two questions. So guys, if you want to uh, become one of my uh, sponsors, let's say coffee sponsors and uh, someone who is really into my channel who want to support what I'm doing you have three options you can buy me a coffee you can click the super thanks button and you can use the PayPal option and you can ask me questions through these three platforms and I will answer them and if they are interesting enough I will present them in one of my videos so Dominic bought me two coffees and asked me two questions and here it is Hello Michal, thanks for your content, I enjoy it a lot. Thank you. There are two topics that are on my mind and I wonder if you have an opinion. First question, and this will be interesting one, because we kind of forget, forgot, forgotten, forgot, forgotten, we forgot about the sensor technology. So where did the sensor technology go? I still have a Zep tennis somewhere, but don't use it. I remember that Babolat had something. Was it play? Yes, it was a play technology as well. I wonder why these sensors all went away. Golf launch monitors are widely used for launch angle, ball speed, ball spin and so on. In tennis, you could measure all that as well, plus racket head speed, arm speed, and so on. There is all that talk about there is all that talk about spin and power, but no one backs it up with data. Why do you think it is so? So great question. So, uh, in my opinion, the racket sensors are dead because you actually don't need this type of data to learn tennis. That's, that's the, 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 the main reason, I believe. Uh, racket sensors are good for someone, for example, who is actually reviewing tennis rackets, who is trying new strings and who wants to know how the equipment, how the tennis gear he's, uh, he's testing uh, kind of uh, changes and, and, and how, how it improves and what are the differences. So when you buy a new string and you want to know whether the string has more spin, you can try it with the, with the sensor in your racket. And of course, the data you will get will tell you whether the racket has or the, 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 the string has a more spin potential because it kind of uh, it extracts the, 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 the spin potential from the frame based on your regular swing actually you don't you don't change you don't change anything when you when you buy a new racket when you buy new strings do you really do you change something you just try to play your game as usual and you can tell the difference only by let's say measuring uh the data so that's what the sensors are good for and for example give i will give you an example uh, Surina de Beer is one of the few uh, YouTubers I stumbled on a few months ago, let's say, 
who is using the new uh, QMate sensor that is still, I believe, in development and you really can't buy it, but this, th this new sensor is really precise, it's really detailed and it measures many, many attributes of the, of the racket. And she uses this QMate sensor when she's reviewing tennis rackets and she gets really, really deep and uh, detailed data from the racket, from the rackets that really correspond uh, to the general, let's say, uh, to the general feedback from all the other testers, playtesters, YouTubers, reviewers and so on but but you get really the sense uh, of a kind of analytic approach to that review and which is fantastic so i sadly she doesn't post lots of videos but when she posts a video i'm the first one who watches the the the, the review for example uh the new the review of the new shift records or the pro staff v14 it was fantastic really lots of proofs lots of detailed stuff and you get that data from the sensor but for someone who is learning the game it doesn't really make any sense to know what rpm are your uh, is your spin what is your spin potential and so on and so on because you 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 cannot uh, kind of um, you don't make any change based on the 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 data. Why would you? You just learn the game the best you can, okay? And someone hits flat, someone hits with more spin, and there is no need to kind of achieve some number to to get to some number. Like I want to have the same rotation of the ball like Nadal so then you would kind of need to improve something to change something to change how you hold the racket to change something but it it, it can happen that the change actually does not r correspond or does not reflect your body type your uh, your chain reaction of your body of your muscles and it can lead to other problems and so on and so on so uh, I don't think it's a good way to to train based on data from your uh, tennis racket sensor it, do it really doesn't make any sense and uh, Dominic talk about golf so he was talking about the golf launch monitors that are widely used for angle ball speed and so on but golf is a completely different sport to, uh, to compare to tennis in golf you have like few shots for a single event let's say but in tennis you play hundreds of shots during the match and you need to focus on many other other things that than your let's say technique so the technique in tennis is in the final uh, package is not the most important thing the most important thing in tennis or let's say at least in a professional tennis is your mental strength your physical strength your tactical capabilities and so on because it doesn't really matter if you have Djokovic, Federer or Nadal technique. All, all of these techniques are in their sense brilliant. The, the, the biggest difference is how you think, how you process the match and so on and so on. So, so no professional actually thinks about his technique during a match. The technique is already done. It's there and you just focused you just focus on how to kind of get the best of yourself but in golf the technique is really really crucial the the angles and the the the, the, the changes in, in millimeters how you hit the the ball 
uh, what speed and so on they are crucial for the outcome of the overall event of the of the match or of the tournament so these kind of things uh, kind of don't correspond they are they don't go together golf and tennis they are different sports with different uh, approaches and different details in mind when it comes to the the competition and to the match so i don't recommend using a tennis sensor for learning tennis i recommend using tennis sensor when you want to analyze how your racket or string works and yes if you have one if you bought a tennis sensor of course you can try it you can use it but I don't think it's a it's a clever way how to learn tennis just based on some data of of your from your from your racket. So let me know, guys, in the comments. What do you think about this topic? Are the tennis racket sensors a gimmick, or can they be useful? Can these sensors be useful for learning tennis? Because I don't think they can actually help you. Uh, in, in improving your technique and your style because as I told you uh, there is lots lots of other things going on when you are learning when you are improving in tennis than just uh, the angle how you hit the ball and so on and so on so the, uh, the focus your movement uh, your athleticism and so on and so on is it, it actually determines how you hit the ball so if you don't have all the attributes all the other attributes that go with tennis then analyzing these data is not it will not bring you any any benefit you will not benefit from it when you are in the learning phase of tennis and now there is the second question and this is also a very interesting question and the question is like this so is there a grip size and geometry comparison out there there seems to be a lot of opinion on grip sizes but again no measurement it would be easy to take a caliper and measure the grip uh, without the base grip to end all the guessing well yes that would be that would be a quite easy thing to do so if you have a racket from uh, the most of the brands like Babolat, Head, uh, Wilson, Technifiber, and so on and so on. You can you can just uh, take any type of these uh, calipers and you can measure the grip sizes when you put when you remove the base grip because it's really interesting that the grip uh, the the grip shape is different so i have here a couple of rackets so here's the racket from wilson this is the autograph serena williams blade sv 102 autograph lovely racket I'm, I'm still uh, waiting for doing a uh, for for making a video of, uh, about this racket because if this racket should have the highest swing weight of all the rackets you can actually buy on the market so if you look at the shape that Wilson has of their of the grips so it's pretty oval it looks kind of uh, let's say big oval and yeah I kind of like that it's it's probably not my favorite grip uh, size and grip uh, shape but I believe it's it's okay for most people i don't have here head racket because i think that head has the best shape of all i have here some artingo rackets so this is the tr 930 uh spin it's the lighter 285 gram version and here i have my uh, tr 960 control tour the galmo fields racket and the grip sizes or the grip shape looks kind of a little bit similar to the Wilson 
so it's also more let's say oval and yeah i like that too and then i have here the technifiber record my previous record or let's say my spare record uh this is the xtc uh xtc uh 300 or uh, sorry xtc 295 and this this grip shape from technifiber the grip shape from technifiber is a little bit looks like it's a little bit more flat so uh, let's say this this side the shorter side of the grip is shorter and this the the longer uh side of the grip is longer compared to other brands so in this sense like this here here it is a little bit flatter and here it looks like it is a little bit let's say wider compared to other racket brands so there are differences in the grip shape everyone has to try it everyone has to uh really uh, feel it to, to 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 get the sense of how you will interact with the record and whether it will suit your style your your type of let's say uh grip how you hold the record and so on and so on so and as i said before i really like the head grip shape because it is an it is it it feels most kind of natural to my palm to my hand and i think it's the best grip shape uh, from all the record brands i have tried so guys these were my two questions i think it will be it would be really kind of easy to do the grip uh, shape measurements just having all of the, all the records from all the brands measuring it and putting to down the numbers and yep you will have it uh, but i don't have all the record brands uh, uh, by myself so it is kind of pointless to do comparison just uh, from these uh, three brands from the artengo technifiber and wilson because if you don't have the other record brands that why why really uh bother so guys thank you so much for watching if you have any question uh that should be or could be interesting just ask me the question throughout the donation and if you donate me something i will post it in my next video so guys thank you so much for watching and as always, enjoy tennis, play tennis every time, every day. And don't forget to enjoy the menu variety. Bye, guys. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. That ball was on the line.